I don't know if you have tried this yet, Pat. Uh, we got a mail a mailer, and since we live close by, I'm assuming you might have gotten it too. The uh, DoorDash coupons. Have you gotten any of those? Mm, we did indeed. Yeah, I've never used it before this quarantine, but uh, I think whenever it ends, I'm still going to. I love it. It's it's awesome. It is very convenient, but it also is very enabling. So yes, I don't want to give in to the urge that I really want a frosty, but yeah, I don't want to get off the couch. Yeah. And with a like a zero dollar delivery fee right now, we mm. had Scrimp Shack last night. I got a crab and shrimp po' boy and it was awesome. Mm. This is dangerous. I can't keep doing this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I will say during our current times and having school closed and a lot of businesses closed, I think we are both doing a good thing by supporting our local businesses. But exactly. I agree we got to try and stay active too and maybe eat healthy in there once in a while as well. Got to stimulate the economy. You know, that's why we got that check. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Pat, you ready to get started? Let's do this thing. Okay. Uh, well, hello, everybody. I'm glad that you can join us for this virtual conference today. We are going to be talking to you about a concept that, Pat, what is this? Is this going to be year three that we've it done this with me. students? That's crazy. So uh, year three, it's called App Stays. And as you can see here at the bottom of the video description, um, at the well, yeah, in the video description and right here too, there is the bit.ly for it. It is case sensitive. Just to get a copy of the presentation that we're going to go through and certainly cover some more slides that we're going to uh, during this time as well. We're gonna go ahead and start with some basic introductions. Uh, my name is Phil Strunk. I'm a sixth and seventh grade US history teacher in Clark County, Virginia. And uh, outside of those things, I host a YouTube show titled Educations. I have a Twitter chat on Thursdays at 9 p.m. Eastern called Whale Chat, where we reflect on wins and losses in education. And uh, I absolutely love it. You know, I'm originally from Pennsylvania, but uh, I heard Virginia was for lovers. And uh, that's where my wife was teaching already. So after we got married, I moved on down and love it here. Uh, Pat, you want to go ahead and introduce yourself? Absolutely. Thank you, sir. I am Patrick Hausman. I can be found online at phasedu.com. Same for Twitter handle at psedu and psedu at gmail.com. And you'll notice on the screen that there's a range of different badges and things. Um, one of the big reasons I point those, put those up there is so you know that as we talk to you and as I talk to you, we're coming from a place of experience. But also, if you see any of the badges on the screen as you look down through and it's something you want to go for, send us a line, send me a line, and I'm more than happy to kind of walk you through what did I do to do Google Innovator? What did I do to be a, a common sense ambassador or a Flipgrid ambassador? I'm all about kind of helping and getting people to the points they want to get to. And that is another connection that me and Phil have. I am the founder of Unison EDU, which is a nonprofit to help schools that don't have the resources or people they need for high quality professional learning. Phil is also a team member in that. And this conference is a joint venture between Eunice and EDU, Virginia Society for Tech and Ed, the Shenandoah Valley Technology Consortium, and JMU. So a lot of groups have come together to put this on for free, 100% across the board, and I'm really excited for this installment of AF Days. Me too, Pat. Uh, real quick, though, before you go on to the next slide, and I feel like this is a this is a common theme between us. Uh, Pat doesn't like to toot his own horn here, but uh, I want you to look at his first badge certificate there too. You know, like he said, he is a Google innovator, but you know, it's a it's not like you know anybody can go be a Google innovator. Pat, how many innovators are there worldwide? We are somewhere close to two thousand, I think, at this point. Yeah, so 2,000 on a world of, what, 7 billion people. So Pat is in a very elite group, and he is the kind of guy where if you really do have a question, reach out to him, and he will help you. Uh, I've gotten some crazy hour time responses from him where I'm thinking, why is he still working right now? You know, But uh, <laughs> Pat's a good dude, and, and again, I'm also really excited to – be here as uh, part of Unison EDU, as a member of VISTI, and uh, just getting to present about a topic that has really helped Pat and I out a lot. Uh, it's especially helping us out right now during this quarantine. So you ready to hit it, Pat? Absolutely. Let's jump All right. In. So let, let's talk about what this is. Um, what was it? Th so yeah, it would have been th about three years ago. I got an email, and well, we all got an email from our superintendent in Clark County, 
And uh, I, I was very giddy because in that email, I found out I would no longer have to fight with the math and English departments to get access to the computer labs. We were going one to one. I was thrilled about this news. Every student was going to get a Chromebook. And so one of my initial thoughts was, how do I want to use this technology not to be a typewriter, to be, but to really be transformative in the way that we teach in 2000? Well, then it was, what, 2018? Um, and so as we, were, as we were going through these things and, and considering and reflecting on it, I thought, I want my students to be able to understand the routines of technology in my class. You know, I'm, I'm not sure how many of you have read Harry Wong's First Days of School, but it talks again and again about this emphasis on routines. And so I designed a hyperdoc over the summer to teach my students how to use essential apps in my classroom. That way I wouldn't have to waste time and, and other teachers out there, you know, you can leave a comment in the video or, you know, raise your hands and say, yes, yes, yes for whenever you introduce a project and you have to spend 30 or 40 minutes teaching them how to use the tools. I thought, no, I'm gonna front load all of this and get it done with. That way we can focus on the learning and less on how to use the technology. Um, Pat, what do you wanna to add to that? I would say the big thing for me, and, and we'll touch on this later on too, is that a lot of people may initially think, oh, well, you're just jumping them with technology right away and tech shouldn't be the focus. and one of the big things I want to stress, and again, we'll touch on this throughout, is tech was not really the focus of it. Our actual learning target or goal with App Stays was cultivating relationships. Everything the students did within the different technologies was to build relationships and help really jumpstart that at the beginning of the year. So there's a twofold kind of dividends payoff at the end of App Stays, and that is you jumpstart those relationships right away, but you also build that tech knowledge right away so that as you go through the year you can say hey fire up this fire up this and the kids already have that they're not learning two things at the same time and you as the teacher aren't trying to teach two things at the same time so keep that in mind as we go through and know that at least the beginning touch here relationships is that huge focus yeah and so again as i as i built this over the summer i very quickly realized that i would need some other people to look over this and so i sent it to pat and i said but you mind checking this out for me? And he looked over it. And again, like I'm telling you, if you need help, he's the guy to reach out to. I, I don't know, Pat, I feel like I'm adding too much work to your plate now. But he <laughs> said that he would willingly co-teach it with me. And that has been a huge help to me uh, over the past two years coming up on a third year, this upcoming school year as well. Absolutely. And as we kind of roll forward, one of the big obvious components of this is a hyperdoc. And if anybody's not familiar with hyperdocs, the slideshow that you see on your screen right now, and you'll notice there is a bit.ly underneath. So if you need to, go ahead and pause the video. It is on the screen in the middle. It is on the screen at the bottom. And we'll also link it into the notes surrounding this session. But that slideshow is going to walk you through everything from a definition of what a hyperdoc is to what's different between a hyperdoc and just a doc with links. And one of the biggest things in my mind of that we can see through this basic template of a hyperdoc. And it's the fact that even just the layout, it's not just links on a page. Mm -hmm. It has legitimate sections that are research-based to really help drive learning. You start with engagement, maybe that's a quote or a video of some sort to really hook and get the students inspired. Then you move on to explore. You cur curate some resources for them to look through to really learn about the different concepts. And you have them explain it in some way that helps them out, or maybe you explain it, you bring them in to help a little bit, then how do they apply that? What assignment, what thing are they actually gonna do that really shows that learning? And then you bring it all around with these last two, which to me are part of the most powerful pieces of it, and that is allowing them to share it out. And for me, that is both within the classroom and outside of it, if you can. Give them as big of audience as you can that is on two sides comfort level as far as your comfort level as far as how why they should share it but also their comfort level and maybe you kind of differentiate that some students may be more comfortable sharing outside the classroom than others let them kind of drive there if you can and then last but not least huge component for me and i know phil believes in this deeply too is the reflection piece let them reflect not only on the path they took to get where they did what worked, what didn't, but then on that final project too, as far as did it come out the way they wanted to? If not, 
what did they learn from it on the way there and how are they going to get past that i didn't quite master it yet but i'm going to keep going from there so you can see you have your general kind of layout here in this document but whenever you might need to you can always come back to that slide deck and as you scroll down through you see we have the basic template here every one of the pictures that you'll find in that slide deck kind of walks you through another template and how you can tweak it and then constant examples different things that you can use this last slide that i'm going to touch on is slide 17 in the deck it gives you one slide of i'm going to say somewhere over a thousand different hyperdocs that you can go straight into do file make a copy and make your own because the people that thought up hyperdocs and it is linked on one of our slides here towards the beginning part these ladies really coined it in the realm of we want this to be a free and open kind of thing we want your work to be recognized we want to make sure that attribution stays on those slides but we don't want it to be something that people have to pay for to get these awesome resources we want to pay it forward and make sure hyperdocs is not just a group of links and it's not just something locked down to people that created it if you create it in the true sense of a hyperdoc you're putting it out there to share it and let people benefit from it and that is really the mindset that we are entering into the app stay side of things with that we kind of created this concept we've now been sharing it as phil said going into our third year of getting it out there in front of people and with that i'm going to let phil take the lead here on kind of giving us the gist on what exactly the app stay hyperdoc is and what it's made up of so it was originally called apps day and then we quickly realized that this was going to be a multi-day sort of thing um, but to dive into it I looked for four essential apps. I'm not trying to overwhelm students with apps that I'm maybe just going to use once ever. Um, and so I had several here, or I had several to choose from. I chose these four. I chose Flipgrid, which is an awesome tool for enhancing student voice. Uh, it's been fantastic since Microsoft bought it and made it free. Voila. The second one is Powtoon and Powtoon once you get into it, if you haven't before, you'll start to notice some commercials on TV that use this program and the software. It's a really great mm -hmm. way to make fun and professional videos. Pat will likes to use this word and I have stolen it since then. It is freemium, <laughs> which means there are some free, some free pieces, some that you got to pay for. I always tell the students, listen, Mr. Strunk's cheap. We only do the free stuff. Screencastify I have on here. It's been helpful for student troubleshooting, like if they have an issue with their Chromebook, and especially right now during remote learning, where they can record things and I can see what's happening on their screen and I can give them specific feedback. But I also like it on here because Screencastify has made my sub plans a really easy job. And so just to be able to show them, hey, you know, know how it works. That way whenever you watch my videos, you, you see what I'm doing and you understand that more. And then the fourth and final, another freemium tool, and it is a freemium tool that I use extensively, Canva. Canva has this uncanny ability to make anybody into a really great graphic designer. Uh, a lot of really cool things I've produced from this, some Twitter posts, classroom posters. Whenever my sister and her fiance got engaged, I was able to use it in some editing to make a really cool card to send them. Uh, it's a really cool thing to use in and out of education. So again, these are the four main apps that I chose. If this is something that you end up being interested in, you don't have to choose these four. That's the cool thing about it too. Find what works for your classroom, find what routines you need to build, and then consider how can I use these to build relationships early on as well. So, so as we look at a couple samples here, uh, Pat's gonna go ahead and talk you through a few. We're gonna start with some from Powtoon. We'll Go ahead and open some of these in the background but i'll show you briefly on this other slide view there's a couple different that are going to show up for powtoon and we'll, again we're letting that one load up in the background because sometimes it takes it a few seconds to f fire up but you'll notice on your screen now there's a couple examples of different things that students created in canva and phil you can correct me if i'm wrong but one of the prompts here was kind of what do you really like to do maybe some things mm -hmm. you did over the summer so you'll see things like gaming and I know Star Wars, Star Wars there in the top right is gonna be a connection to Phil as well. Bingo. And you can see we have things like sports teams and different things there that again, students are using the tool, but it's really building those relationships and helping Phil to know 
what some of these kids are really interested in. And it really has been helpful, especially as uh, some of my students who, you know, I imagine that, that we are in similar boats where at the start of a school year, whenever you get your roster, sometimes you have a teacher that comes up to me like, oh, you have that kid. Well, yeah, I do. And I'm really excited to teach that kid. So what the benefit is here is I can look at their students as they're designing these things and I can find things that I can build immediate connections with. So one of those students this year, he had a huge interest in basketball. And so I just talked to him a little bit about basketball here and there. And that helped me out big time. So that then whenever we were in meetings and I was talking to other teachers and they're like, hey, you know, how is this kid for you? I could very simply say, he's great because I built that connection. I built that relationship. For Paltoon, the assignment was simply, you know, tell me something you're excited about. Tell me something you're nervous about for this school year. And so watching these things has been really helpful uh, in a way to build a deeper connection with the students. Yeah, and we will come back to the Paltoon side if it wants to work for us. It may well be my internet on my side as we try and navigate this remotely. But Paltoon has a really simple interface that you can see uses kind of cartoon-like graphics. Students can then input text boxes and things like that. And then Powtoon helps kind of seamlessly weave that together so that you get a little animated movie clip that the students, again, they walk through each part of that. They can set transitions and things within that tool, but it makes it so it's something very simple that they can get through. But then as they use it more as the year goes on, it becomes even more powerful as they start to dive into some of those different pieces of the tools. And that's another side to this at the beginning of the year. This is the point in time where we really encourage the students to explore the tools. When you're teaching live in the moment, you're trying to get through content and stay with that kind of overhanging pacing guide that haunts a lot of our teachers. This is a time where you can give them a little more time to dive into those rabbit holes. How many different fonts can I try? How many different color backgrounds can I have? How many images is too many images in Canva? Let them play with some of those things now so that when they get there later down the line, they're like, oh, I remember I discovered this thing. Let the students talk with each other. When they find something awesome, let them share it with the table next to them and be like, oh, did you see this? Oh, that sounds crazy. I love it. And then, of course, in the spirit of sharing, me and Phil are also going to give you your own very own copy of Apps Day. Phil, do you want to take the lead on walking us through what this looks like? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, as you see the meme there, I'm a lover of all things meme. Uh, you could click on that or click on where it says, get your own copy of App Stays. But uh, whenever you click on that, what you're going to find is that uh, you're gonna get this template and very simply at the top, there's a watch this video. I wanted my students to start with that engagement piece. And so there is an old, or I don't know how old it is now, but there is an Apple commercial out there about homework. I hate homework. So I have them watch that because the, the point there isn't that they hate homework. It's that they hate the traditional way homework's always been given to them. Uh, but whenever it's allowed to be more innovative and more robust, it really engages those students. And so you know, I'm pretty open with them. I hope that this is something that's really going to engage them. Now, once they watch uh, the video, then you have the directions here. And you can see, I have my HyperDocs set up very differently than others have been set up. That's another beauty of, of HyperDocs and of Apps Day. Make it what works for you and your students. So in the left column, I have learning activities. And on the right, I have how they're going to show me mastery. How are they going to prove that they know how the apps work? We start with Flipgrid. It's a really simple video. They introduce themselves and they tell me about the best thing they did that summer. So then whenever I go home, I can open up Flipgrid and watch the videos. If I'm like, hmm, I need, a, I need to check something about this student just to maybe find out something they did to really make a good connection. Another thing that's nice about this stuff too is that as they're recording, Pat and I are able to walk around the room, hear from students. And so a lot of the stuff that they're recording in there, we've already heard them say and so it's a great just reference check back point for them as well uh, obviously this is an assignment that is not graded because not everything needs to be graded and I don't think this would be appropriate to to be graded by any stretch of the mean uh, so once they move on from Flipgrid we drive we drop down to Canva and on there that's where they're going to create a graphic that's explaining you know 
basically themselves. It's introducing themselves and their interests. And so, yeah, you saw the football players, you saw the Star Wars stuff, uh, you saw a lot of stuff on the previous graphics. But then I want to teach them how, and this is like a soft skill thing, how to submit a shareable link. Mm -hmm. Because there are several times, and you know, I'll be honest with you, this is something that I still need to go back and reteach students pretty consistently throughout the year. But this at least gets a good chunk of the students out of the way that I don't have to remind them how to do this again in the future. So teaching them that soft skill, how to insert their shareable link, because this is going to be the hub for all the assignments. Yeah, and so once I, we I get think that's a really critical piece as far yeah. as thinking too when you design this. What are those kind of housekeeping things? those kind of housekeeping skills that are going to help you as a teacher down the road. If you know you're going to use shareable links and things like that, make sure you incorporate some of those things in there. If there's some routines that you want to make sure students get, maybe work some of those routines into what they do in apps day. And on the flip side, if you're going to use something like classroom to drive a lot of things, we'll use Google classroom to hand out this template and they'll be handing in some of the things in Google classroom. So within those first few days, we're establishing some of those routines, we're building relationships, we're learning some of the different pieces of the tech, and they're also learning the correct ways, the good ways to hand things in, and that helps them, and it also pays a lot of dividends for the teacher on the flip side. Yeah, and it's such an easy transition to the start of the school year too, because you know, people are surprised to hear this all the time whenever I say it. Uh, whenever students come in from summer, the first thing they wanna learn about is surprisingly not the reconstruction uh, plans and the reconstruction amendments. No, they wanna be able to talk about what they did that summer. And so this helps them still learn and it still helps them um, be able to express themselves a little bit more. So once they're done with Canva, they jump into Powtoon. And in Powtoon, they're gonna create a video that like I said, it explains something they're excited about and something that they're nervous about for the year. And this lets them kind of express that to me so that then I can watch it and say, okay, so like Timmy's really worried about not doing well in school, how can I, you know, make sure that I help Timmy, you know, feel affirmed in the classroom. Or, you know, John is worried about making friends. Who are some people that as the school year continues, I can, I can think about, mm, these two would be like, would be good working together. Because mm. especially in, if they come to me in seventh grade, uh, I've taught some of them in sixth grade too. And so again, it helps to build that relationship. The fourth and final app is Screencastify. And this is my big reflection piece. I have them figure out how to use Screencastify and then they need to make a video where they tell me something they really liked about Apps Day and something they would change about it. And I tell them, you know, you're not gonna hurt my feelings. I'm not gonna cry, at least not in front of you. Uh, and so, you know, just tell me, what are some things that you would like to see changed or modified? Maybe one of these apps isn't like what we need. And especially if I had them in sixth grade and then they come back in seventh grade, I really value that feedback because they've had a year with me. And so they get a, a bit of a sense about how I structure my class on a daily basis. So that's the template. Please make a copy of it if you're interested in it. Uh, use it, use it, use it. One of my big things this summer is that um, one of the pesky things that ed tech companies do is they change and they improve. Mm -hmm. And so I've got to go back and make some video, tu video tutorials, but uh, anything like that is going to be put into the slide deck as well. Pat, you want to talk about G Suite, Mr. Innovator? Something we will touch on just briefly because we want to make sure we get to all the resources and things in the time that we have is a secondary hyperdoc that follows the beginning apps days one. And we, and I believe this was Phil titled it G Suite, which is a little bit of a play on words for Google for education and G Suite, of course, being a little bit different in the spelling side, but mm -hmm. What G Suite does is give them a great task that is kind of built in almost as an enrichment. Really, we're focusing on app stays the most, but G Suite allows them to walk through a lot of the basics of really almost all of the G Suite apps, especially things like Docs and Slides, the main ones that they might use. But it walks them through a lot of those things and again, allows them time to play with all the fonts, the background colors, transitions, all of those different things before it becomes more of a crunch time when projects are due, when things are happening like that. And as Phil notes on the slides, it also gives them a lot of that time to get questions answered before things happen so that later on down the line, there's not a lot of questions of how do I change the font? I need a new slide. How do I do that? It walks them through a lot of those things with videos, with how to different things built in. 
and you can see again that this hyperdoc is laid out very much like the apps day one was which is very different than the sample that i showed you and that's something that phil stressed and something i will piggyback on as well your hyperdoc does not have to look anything like ours you can go to town on different fonts and colors it could be more of a choice board type of thing mm -hmm. use what works for you use the tools that work for you so you can see we have tutorials down the side what do we need you to do how do you hand it in down through docs slides forms sheets and a little bit of drawings goodness on the tail end side. So you can see it really builds on the app state side, takes them into the realm of G Suite, so they master some of those things. And then something that we also did new this year in our second running of it was building in some actual badges that students could earn for both app stays. There was a separate badge for completing that and a separate bonus one for completing G Suite as well. So it gave students especially on the G Suite one, a little bit more incentive to keep working on that, maybe even as class had kind of moved on because they wanted to get that second badge, slap it on their Chromebook and walk proudly through the halls as App Stage champions. Yes, I'm sure that is exactly what they were thinking. <laughs> uh, I, I will admit though, you know, I, I'm pretty sure I got everybody that did the App Stay one within like a week or so. I'm pretty sure I got them all their stickers but it takes a lot of ink. <laughs> so I don't think I got too many G Suite ones out this year, but I, I want to be better this upcoming school year. That's my goal. Get everybody their G Suite and their apps day one. But uh, yeah, the micro credentialing was a, was a huge success. We had a student new to our school this year. And uh, after she completed apps day and I gave her the sticker, she looked at me puzzled and I said, what's up? She said, do you always get stickers for finishing your homework at this school? <laughs> like, no, this stickers. Is Adults love stickers. Exactly. Who doesn't love a good sticker? Um, <laughs> As so you, you know, can see, I collect a couple badges. Yeah, you know, check out uh, check out teachers' emails. <laughs> <laughs> so, Pat, as we reflect on this, you know, we have a lot of uh, a lot of really good things from App Stay to talk about. But you know, we also have some growth points too. Uh, mm -hmm. We're not immune from it. We're, we are by no means perfect. But it's been really nice to not have to reteach every single piece of technology every time that I use it in class. Uh, there are some students who still need that support. And so I help them out there or a student that needs like one or two troubleshooting questions like, oh, maybe we haven't used Powtoon in a quarter and you know they forget how to do something. That's okay, let me explain it to you. Uh, one of the big things though is how much it has helped other teachers across mm -hmm. the building. And so you know, I have students who, if they have that sticker on their Chromebook, the, the teachers know, oh, they know how to use these apps, they can help explain it to another student. Or those other teachers know that they can assign anything from those four apps, and all my students should know how to use that. We're a small school, and so I teach, by and large, all of seventh grade minus a couple sections. So the majority of the kids know how to use this stuff. Uh, Pat, do you want to talk about how it's starting to evolve to becoming a more division-wide sort of thing? Yeah, and that's something we, just this year, I actually branched out into the elementary school because they actually caught the Facebook Live we did when we presented at the Teach Better conference this past year and got really excited about the concept of App Stays. So we actually branched out into third grade and brought some of these skills and things. And we did choose some different apps. So again, you and can not as many App Stays fit exactly what works for you, the grade level, all that determines how in depth and how many things they do. But I will say the unintended consequence, at least, or not consequence, but an unintended great thing that happened with App Stay initially was how it started to filter out into the school and now has gone beyond. And we're starting to think about how can we connect to more teachers and build either a larger library of apps or maybe do two or three here and then two or three here to spread that wealth around. But it's also built in, like Phil said, kind of that student tech squad that knows a lot of these things and can help not only students, but Phil touched on it too, but help the teachers sometimes when they struggle with these things. And I know the last bullet point on here is something that I still struggle with. I, I like to say I'm a recovering perfectionist, <laughs> but the first time we ran it, App Stays took a lot longer than we anticipated because a lot of the students wanted all of the little things to be perfect. They wanted Flipgrid to be perfect. They wanted their Powtoon and their Canva things to be perfect, things aligned, fonts perfectly sized. So we have done, a, I think, a really good job in the second running mm -hmm. to make sure they know this is your time to play. 
we definitely want it so that we can read all the words, try and make sure something's not running off the side and graphics aren't cut off, but it doesn't have to be perfect. We want to learn about you. We want you to play with it, but know that right now, this is not a time that it needs to be perfect. It just needs to be showing that you're learning, you're growing with it. Yeah, we want to build that student capacity. We want to give them that baseline so that they know, you know, how do I open up a Flipgrid? How do I open up an assignment in Canva? How do I insert text into that? How do I insert animations in the Powtoon? How do I create a screencast recording? That way, whenever I give them the content stuff, they can focus much more because they already know how to open it and how to get started with it. They can focus much more on, on the minute, very intentional content oriented pieces of these assignments. Uh, and so as we consider some things for the future and, you know, as we just encourage you to consider things as well, a few things for whenever you plan, consider the naming of the files, some simple things to teach them how to name a file, because if they look like my students have in the past, it says untitled document, untitled document, untitled document, mm -hmm. uh, how to turn things in. I still have students that need that reminder of Mr. Strunk, I turned this into Google Classroom. Yeah, but did you click the blue turn in sign after you attached it? Oh, <laughs> uh, the shareable links. What does freemium mean? And teaching them about the procedures and rules of the ed tech as well. Pat, you want to take it from here? Yeah, and we won't read all of these because, again, you can pause this video and go down through. But a couple that I'll touch on, make sure you customize every part of this to your room. It doesn't have to use the same apps, the layout. Customize it to fit your students and really what would help you and them starting at the beginning of the year. Encourage them to push all the buttons. Very few times do teachers have the time to encourage this. Use this as that time to let them play with it. And that is a component to building those relationships too, that you trust them to do good things with the tools and explore it in a responsible way. And that kind of sets a nice tone as well. And think about maybe you could include parents or guardians in this at some point too, because we're thinking about how we might evolve App Space too. We're thinking about maybe a some sort of a break in versus a breakout to learn about Mr. Strunk before they start it. So think about different wrinkles you can add in because word will spread. This was a very positive thing for the students and something they really liked. So know that kids are going to learn about it. They're going to like it. They're going to expect some new and different things as it comes around. Yeah, and uh, usually whenever we present this, we have more time. And so we like to build in workshop time. That way, while we're here, we can kind of help out with any sort of questions. Uh, one of the big benefits, though, of this being a virtual conference is that now you have the opportunity to uh, take however much time you need. You know, you don't have to rush to the next session and you can work through stuff. And so in our next slide, we have a list of tons of different apps uh, the really cool thing that Pat did is all the logos throughout the presentations, throughout the presentation, if you click on it, uh, it will link it to, or it is linked to whatever app that is. So you have a big chunk of apps right there. Um, the and more takes you to a tech tool database that Clark County has been putting together with, <sighs> Pat, do we have 150? How many apps do we have in that? I believe it's 125, but getting ready to add somewhere around 50 or so more in the yeah. early near future. So, you know, we have a lot of resources in there for you to be able to look at apps and consider what's going to work for you, what's going to work for your classroom. Uh, Chromebooks and uh, Chrome did some new stuff or Google did some new stuff that, that Pat's going to go into depth here about, but it really is great how many options we have here to use. Yeah. So one of the links on there, the two that link to more stuff is obviously the and more and then the Chromebook app hub, which is a huge repository that Google built out with the help of certified trainers, innovators and some different app um, owners, developers, companies. Um, but that is distinctly things that are all gonna work without a doubt on a Chromebook. And it's not gonna be just, here's a tool. It's gonna be, here's a tool, here's a specific use that actually worked in my room. Here's a contact person that can help you with it. And here's all the different bits and pieces you need from guides to how do you think of differentiation with this. A bunch of different things, it is searchable, it is an awesome resource if you are using Chromebooks. And a lot of the stuff is going to work off of Chromebooks as well. So if you're in a di district that has Macs or PCs or Windows, check it out too, because a lot of those things, if it works on a Chromebook, it's going to work in those realms as well. Right. So, you know, thank you so much for watching our presentation. Please, please, please feel free to contact us at any time. You know, we, we are not kidding. 
Uh, we really like helping out with these sort of things. You see uh, Pat and I, we have our websites there and our Twitter handles there. Um, Pat, I think your website, does your website have a contact me page? It does indeed. Yeah, so, and, and, and mine does too. So you can contact us there, send us a message on Twitter. Uh, and yeah, I mean, Pat, is there anything you want to add? Not much. The only thing I'll say is, Keep in mind, and Phil's touched on this, it doesn't have to be tomorrow. It doesn't have to be next week or even next year. If you're tiptoeing into this concept or even some of the tools, contact us anytime. We will help out and we would love to collaborate. And if you get time, go ahead and click that evaluation link that'll be on your slides and give us some feedback on the session and maybe even just app stays in general. There's some open-ended spots in that evaluation too. Let us know how we can keep learning and getting better because I stressed it during the presentation and uh, Phil's chat while Ed chat on Thursday nights, 9 p.m. is all about that power of reflection. So we really do take those evaluations to heart, reflect mm -hmm. so that we can keep getting better and offering you guys better and better things. So thank you all so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, and uh, we'll catch you next time. Thank you guys. It was a pleasure to be with you, even if it was virtually. <laughs> thank you. <laughs>